This is about Mescal. I'm Ansley Cole from Craft Distillers. I helped start Germain Robin Brandy in 1982, and later on I was involved in setting up Hangar One. And what attracts me to this work is the artisan aspect. Not many people get how much work and how much skill and how much talent it takes to distill well, which means capturing something's essence and turning it into a couple of ounces of great distilled spirit. In 2003, Ron Cooper of Del Maguey, who's done unbelievable things for Mescal, introduced me to Jaime Munoz of the Distilleria Los Danzantes in Oaxaca in southern Mexico. This gave me the chance to be around artisan distillers from Oaxaca, watching them turn this big strange plant, namely the agave, into a distilled spirit. The spirit is called mezcal, and it's made from the agave plant, which the Mexicans call the maguey. The mezcal most people know is tequila, which is a mezcal made in the Jalisco region, specifically from the blue agave. But unfortunately, some huge proportion of exported tequila is made with industrial shortcuts. In Oaxaca, they distill mezcal entirely by hand. And they also distill it from other varieties of agave. Like I said, I have respect for stuff made by hand in old fashioned ways. The mezcal I'm interested in is made in amazingly old fashioned ways. And that's why some of it is so good. The usual maguey in Oaxaca is the agave espadín, which is in fact the genetic ancestor of the blue agave they make tequila from. In good hands, the espadín yields mezcals that are softer and richer than tequila. When you drive around the state of Oaxaca, you see lots of tiny mezcal distilleries. You find good mezcals by tasting them. And every once in a while, you taste a great mezcal. And the reason it's great is because out back, some patient and careful distiller is making it. Someone who has the desire and the know-how to capture what's inside the agave, the maguey, that he's making it from. That's what artisan distilling is all about. The maguey is an unusually complex plant, so it's possible to make extraordinary spirits from it. That's what a great distiller can do. Most of the distillers I'm working with grow their magueys on the sides of mountains. In, in a high desert climate, mountain magueys have it really tough. So when a local distiller turns a mountain maguey into mezcal, he has a chance of making something that has an unusual amount of character. Good distillers want magueys that are fully mature, which means 10 to 12 years old. And that means ones that have had the time to develop deep flavor, complex flavor. The mature magueys are big. And they're heavy, like about 160 pounds trimmed out. It takes four men to put one in a truck. This is Hector Vasquez, the man who distills Los Donzantes in Santiago, Matatlan. The, well, the cooking and fermentation are very important in this process. Um, this is when Maguey is having this um, transformation. And uh, as much as you can not make it suffer, you will have a better mezcal. So if you try to hurry up, you're making it suffer. I think we have to have some respect for the plant and what the plant and the earth and soil and sun and rain are giving us. After the harvest, the maguey's are roasted. Roasting converts the carbohydrates into sugars so that you can ferment the sugars into low-proof alcohol for distillation. You can do this fast in a steam autoclave, which is what almost all of the tequilas made for export use, or you can do it the old-fashioned way, which is slow roasting them in a fire pit. That takes days. Roasting makes the maguey's soft so that you can mill them. They get amazingly sweet. Artisan distillers in Oaxaca use a stone mill that crushes the magueys and releases their juice. And after crushing, the juice and the pulp are fermented in wood tanks. Oaxacan distillers use native yeasts, which can take several days to turn the sugars into alcohol. When the fermentation is complete, the alcohol is about 5%. 
Mescal's distilled twice, like cognac, in tiny pot stills. The biggest difference between these Oaxacan mezcals and tequila is that a tequila distiller filters out all the solids. Tequila distillers use only the juice. And this is Pedro Hernandez at his family's distillery in San Baltasar, and, and you can see how he's putting all the solids into the still along with the juice. The solids are a lot more work to distill, but the solids are why good mezcal is so rich and complex. Distilling takes hours. A lot of the work is just paying the kind of attention you can pay when you've done it a hundred times. You're watching and you're waiting, making sure that everything goes right, like getting even heat out of a wood fire so the distillation is consistent. What's going on inside the still is that the flavor from the roasted and fermented maguez is being concentrated and purified. What started out as a thousand pounds of slow-growing plants were out on the mountainside a couple of weeks ago are being transformed into a few liters of mezcal. It takes a month to work through a truckload of maguez. And when you're done, you end up with about 800 bottles of mezcal. So distilling's a ton of work, but it can also be an art. A distiller like Pedro Hernandez has made hundreds of runs Every one of them was different. There's a million little things, and a great distiller gets all of them exactly right. Of the many, many things that human beings make distilled spirits out of, I think the agave is the most complex. That's why when an artisan mezcal distiller is gifted, he can make one of the finest spirits in the world.